Very warm welcome from me. Um, I would call that simply uh, uh, the stars are aligning for Design Works this year and uh, in this moment. This is one of these uh, kind of moments uh, you, know, you can only dream of. Design Works is turning 50 years old and uh, we'll have a special guest here tonight. I'll get to it later. Um, we have Art Freeze uh, in LA, which is uh, uh, which uh, turned over the last few years uh, very quickly into one of my favorite uh, art shows because I find it attracts very eclectic audiences. And uh, and then we came up with the idea of tying uh, our opening event for the studio and the freeze and an art and design talk uh, together, uh, which led us to tonight's event. So again, I'm very happy to have you all here, to welcome you. And now I would like to ask uh, to the panel uh, uh, three of my very favorite people. Uh, first of all, Thomas, where are you? Thomas, Thomas Demand. Uh, Thomas and I worked on the project, which Adrian uh, and Thomas will talk about and we'll get into. Uh, super exciting. Uh, Thomas uh, and I kind of Worked, I think it was 2019, you came to the studio in Newbury Park. So, very happy to have you here tonight for this talk. Thank you. Thank you. Second person, uh, Atelia. Uh, Atelia will kind of do a dual role tonight. She will be our moderator and also contributor to the talk. Uh, Atelia is an independent uh, writer. Uh, for uh, Open BMW, a project in London. So, um, again, very familiar with art and design. So, she will make sure that this will turn into a very interesting conversation. Okay, and last but not least, uh, Adrian van Hoydonk. Uh, I think uh, Vice President of BMW Group Design, my boss and mentor. So, very happy to have you here. Okay. Uh, welcome, Adrian. Welcome, Thomas. And Atelia. So, off you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Thomas. It's a pleasure and an honor to be moderating this talk. So, I'd like to start from um, the, your collaboration in 2019 for the BMW um, Next, Vision and Next. We have the car here, we have the beautiful artworks that Thomas has created. And I'd like to first know from Adrian why this car? Uh, why was the perfect car for, the, for this collaboration, and then from your point of view, uh, how these images and these artworks came to life? Well, uh, we, we knew each other for a number of years. I knew, of course, uh, the type of artwork that, uh, that Thomas made, and uh, we always had a feeling we wanted to do something together, and then um, this sort of seemed like a good opportunity, because um, this was going to be an important uh, show car for us. We were still busy making it, and uh, in Munich, Thomas was living in LA, and um, the idea was born that uh, Thomas would create some special images of the car, um, uh, and that would be the images that we would use to introduce the car. So those were the, the first images that we released for the project. The difficulty, of course, was that uh, Thomas could not see the car because it was being built in Munich, and. Actually, we have invited him here in DesignWorks then uh, to, to show him the car, at least digitally. And that's how, uh, how the project came about. And that's why I think it's cool now that DesignWorks is uh, reopening uh, here in Santa Monica uh, to, to talk about this project a little bit. So, um, thing is, uh, I always look at these, I look at photography in general with great interest, and that's what I, my profession is about. And there is always these teaser images, and they 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 float an idea for like half an hour in the in the internet about what it could be, and it's usually it's kind of you see like one edge, a little something, it's all black, and I thought it would be really nice if I can do one of those ones because the audience is completely different. Nobody cares whether it's been done by me, whether it's art or not. It's kind of completely it has its own little life. These kids, you have everybody in the room, but I, I guess they, they, knows them. And they all look the same, by the way. And any brand always, they do the same. It's a tiny little silhouette or something like that. <clears throat> and so I, when when this came to me, I, I thought like that, it could be quite interesting to look into that. But then again, 
my work is very specific and my material is very specific for the ones which don't know uh, don't know it. It's it's mostly paper. And then this came along, and it has a couple of uh, angles which are following the logic of paper, which I found really interesting. And I have to say also, like the recent direction in BMW is taking, the angular design and the flat surfaces and the and the and the, and the very kind of pronounced kind of uh, I would say folds even um, have a similar aesthetic, which I found quite uh, remarkable, and they. They look very distinguishable in traffic that way. And so basically, when he came along and he asked me whether I would be willing to consider that, I came with my studio, with like two people from my studio, into DesignWorks in Malibu where they were, and we had a little conference like to see what's possible and which angle would be good, which was fantastic because like all you know the, the materiality was missing, but like the idea was all there, and then uh, we got this little part of the car in our studio and we got it drilled and then we got it in the, in the studio and we just played around until we found the possible images for the for the teaser images. Fantastic. So the starting point was a digital image for a digital visualization the model in the car. Well it, we, we materialized it before the car was actually materialized. Yeah. In a sense, because we needed to put work parallel, and then there is, you know, the right hand one is, a, is 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 one of the, the. I also inserted the sky of LA in the in the reflection of the glass because I like I like the sky in LA, <laughs> and so, but it's kind of you know it works that angle works and it's very distinguishable because of the orange of course and the I thought like the, that was one of the best parts of the whole car is actually the rear end. Um, because it has a, it kind of looks classic, but then it's again very, very complex as a shape. And we, that, it was just a challenge. And it wasn't even, it shouldn't even look at me like, like my work in the end. That's not, that wasn't the objective. I remember that Thomas' motivation came from what he just said that uh, normally teaser images are boring, <laughs> but they all look the same. So that's where uh, I think we got him excited. Um, and yes, I think our form language is always using very precise razor sharp lines and I guess in paper you can do that not flat surfaces but uh, this was a car where for the first time we used color blocking as you can tell and uh, I think this this was then also the area that Thomas focused on and that led to I think these fantastic images that even if you don't know what it represents I think they are very strong uh, images. Completely. It's actually interesting to have a teaser that is revealing very little about but it's really funny because like the 3D design today is kind of actually could do any shape, amorphous and anything. But kind of to be able to put it back into paper is, is kind of nearly anachronistic in a sense. So to make it still looking like a real thing and make it still like a cool shape, whilst it's actually paper, was that was another kind of a little extra task. Great. Um, I have a question for Adrian directly. So today um, we heard a lot about design work, so we had a little you know, intense focus uh, in the afternoon and we heard that design works is the ears and eyes of BMW, which I thought was a brilliant metaphor to think about the unique work that happens here. I'd like you to tell us a bit more what is design works and how does it stand within the BMW uh, group? Yeah, happy to do that. Uh, because I worked here myself uh, actually uh, for four or five years uh, when we still had the, the other studio but I enjoyed that very much and um, as we all know California is uh, um, a place where people love cars, use them every day um, and it is also in that sense a very competitive and interesting market for us uh, as BMW Group. If a new car comes out you see it right away on the street and you see what sells and what doesn't. And you see how people use their cars, and it's a very interesting mix also. DesignWorks nowadays also has a studio in uh, Shanghai, and one in Munich. Uh, and uh, they are all now connected digitally, uh, and they work on every single production program that we have uh, in, in all of our brands. Uh, and they are also asked to think ahead, to do advanced design. So in that sense, um, being in those important regions of the world, they are our eyes and ears uh, on the ground. But I feel that DesignWorks has become even more than that. DesignWorks is now also a door uh, for us to the world and for the world to come to us. 
because you have seen, I think, this afternoon that uh, the team here in California is working with some startup companies from California, developing uh, new materials, new design solutions. And of course, those companies, they have heard about BMW, but I guess they wouldn't even know uh, how to contact BMW or they wouldn't dare or you know the big company BMW probably that's too daunting of a prospect so I think uh, a smaller setup like this one is very helpful for us um, to interact more with the real world I would say uh, and that actually helps us uh, check whether what we are doing uh, in headquarters is indeed relevant to the to the various markets. So constant interdisciplinarity because you work with very different uh, fields uh, on, like, whilst thinking about the automotive uh, design work still as a constant uh, interaction with different fields, which brings back. We do, and, and that's actually also one of the reasons why I like working with people like Thomas, with artists, um, because uh, it's not necessarily car design that, that we do together, but I think uh, an artist like Thomas also looks at the world today um, and society and how it develops and how uh, how it will develop uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, and then he does give me feedback about our work, right? Um, an honest and open feedback and uh, it helps me, uh, first of all, check whether my image of the future corresponds to his image of the future. And also to see then again uh, whether what we're doing is relevant, is going to be relevant for the future. So the future somehow is formed through constant conversations between artists and designers. Would you think that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can agree on that. <laughs> between the two of us, we form the future. Is that what you see? Yeah, so it's not, not quite like that, but uh, we like to think. Well, the future doesn't ask us. Maybe. No. <laughs> no, but as it's car, just coming. car designers uh, and definitely artists, uh, they constantly question the present and uh, Yeah, but it's also, I would, even, I would disagree uh, because it is the two completely different things, and I don't, I don't want to denounce what you do, but I don't think it's visual arts in the sense I do visual arts. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of a completely different field. The needs are different, the demands, the freedoms are in very different areas. Um, but that makes it interesting. You know, there's many things which are kind of I would do, he would do, and many things that he would do, I, I can't come along and join him. But that's you know that's friction is actually what makes it. An interesting conversation because I'm not trying to kind of sell him my design or something, you know, which is that would be one I guess. <laughs> and I'm not trying to sell my design to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I find it very interesting because, like, I mean, that's one of the things I which kept going and coming up in our conversation for many years is, um, uh, and I'm not sure whether I can, you know, you know that all better than me, but uh, they. They do something which is probably coming, big, becoming visual in four or five years into the world. And then it has to last at least 10 years to be fresh, which I think BMW is actually doing a remarkable job on. Even if you see a design which is 10 years old, you think like you, there's still kind of parts in there which, didn't, which are complete, not completely swallowed by, um, by, by usage or by like it has, has, has been basically seen up. Or getting boring or something, but then you know, then you if somebody has a car, let's say for three years from, because of a leasing, and then somebody else takes it. He's very proud of that car, and when he, that guy sells it, he still needs to have a visually interesting car to sell. So we'll be looking at 15 years into the future, and nobody can really obviously just, you know predict the future. But the idea, the the, the, the demand in in society has is that you just project into like a vast and very complex landscape of unpredictable little factors here and there. And you also make the future at the same time, because of course your things are everywhere. I remember I was sitting when we drove once back, right back from DesignWorks, I had a BMW, um, I, bought, I bought one, <laughs> get a free, I don't get free cars here. But I, um, a convertible, and it was like a three series convertible or something. And I thought, I, and I took him back from Malibu, I remember we were standing at a PTA, PCH, <clears throat> and then it suddenly occurred to me, I'm sitting together with a guy who is actually somehow responsible for 
that thing I'm sitting in, and there's like 60 other BMWs in the same traffic jam at the same time. So it's kind of so it's such a mass market you, you, you work on. And then I discussed with him, you know, the little leather in the dashboard with the four leather. Yeah. And then he says, "Yeah, I was never really because there are parts where it repeats too far, too quickly. I was never never really happy with that." And then, of course, you think like, okay, I got a new car, what do you mean? He says, well, I did this like six years ago. <laughs> and you just realize what the scope of this, uh, of this undertaking is, which is really very different from mine. So, in other words, I'm very glad that I don't have to do that. <laughs> um, uh, I understand. I mean, I would say that what we do is, is at the same level as, as art. But uh, I sometimes say that uh, industrial design uh, is sort of at the crossroads between engineering and art. I hope I'm allowed to say that. Uh, because like in engineering, we have many problems that we need to solve. You know, how to make this object, how to make it in a certain time and in a certain cost. So there's quite a lot of factors that influence what we do, a lot of pressure. Um, at the same time though, when we have solved all these things, we want to create a shape, something that, uh, that inspires people that goes beyond uh, the mere functionality. So I think we, we need to sort of do a bit of both. And like I said, these kind of contexts for me are only inspirational and helpful. Uh, and I would never say that it's at the same level what we're doing, but um, still there is always enough that we find to talk about actually. So as an inspiration, I think it's very helpful. <coughs> In London, I run a program um, between uh, BMW engineers and designers and artists. So artists are invited to work uh, in conversation with BMW designers, which is quite fantastic because there is a dialogue and they inspire each other towards uh, creating a new work that gets presented at Freeze London. And this conversation is, uh, within its own specificity, the artists come and have very practical questions uh, to the designers, uh, which then share their field of knowledge uh, with the artists. Uh, in order to solve some technical problems, but also just inspiring each other. And the output is always a friendship and having artists that are absolutely amazed by entering such specific capacities and um, set of knowledge, which is so specific because the BMW word has technical knowledge for every single part of a car, which for artists is, artists are much more multidisciplinary very often, so it's quite uh, fantastic to observe from within. Um, and the perfect match between artists and designer often happens on the there's a shared interest uh, towards the production of a specific piece of artwork. Um, this leads me to another question, which um, I'd like to know if there is uh, any project that you haven't been able to realize yet, but you'd love to make. In the near future. Me? I'm in a lucky position that so far I could actually realize all the projects I want because I, I get some paper and I do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I have you know, like, um, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question, but I've always wanted to buy, build a building and I just did that. So it's in, in Denmark, and it's, it was a total journey. With also in terms of materiality, what you just said about the artist is that you know, like um, you don't have really access to to very very advanced technology usually, and so if somebody can help you with that, it's it's a it's a real gift. So, uh, but like you know, now I I do what I want to want to do. <laughs> I also can't complain because, uh, let's say, in between the brands that we have, the BMW Group, Rolls-Royce, Mini, uh, BMW, there's never been a dull moment or a boring project that we had to do or that I had to force the team to do. So, so far, you know, plenty of, of interesting jobs. Then we also take the liberty, especially in a team like this one, to, to create projects that the company didn't specifically ask for. Uh, this, for instance, was one of those things. Uh, they don't always get produced, and maybe that's then different from, from you, because you can always find a gallery or a museum that displays your work. Um, but I always tell also my team that we need to have more ideas than the company can possibly build. 
because the other way around would be very bad. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what motivates us. So we have the freedom to, to make complete vehicle proposals and quite often actually that then got the ball rolling. And, uh, as a design team nowadays, even in a big company like BMW, you can have quite a lot of influence. Certainly because uh, right now um, a lot of the technology is changing, society is changing faster, so it raises more questions than ever before. And when there's questions, then typically designers or artists perhaps uh, really trust uh, themselves to give some answers. I mean, I think it's quite interesting right now to see, for instance, in, with what you're working on, how how the digital space and the, and the analog, I mean, the, you know, the physical space are actually kind of overlapping. And if they actually do, and that's, I, th I think it's not a resolved thing. I think it would be great if everybody knows where it's going, but like it's, it's, you have to try to kind of, you know, you spend, we all spend too much time on the, on the screens all the time, and how can you get this away from this little thing uh, into your surrounding without like um, losing the haptic and the, you know, just what makes life in, in clear interesting, you know, like maybe the sun, you know, and not like walk through the street like this all the time. So, in a, in a sense, I think that's kind of something which I see, for instance, with, with you guys are doing, um, with great interest, and I'm, I'm sure there's like 500 proposals and like only one will make it in the end, but you need these 500 proposals first, no? Is it fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. I mean, we, we work digitally, like you say, uh, because everything that comes after gets very expensive, right? So when we start building cars, tooling up a whole factory, that's a serious investment. Uh, how can you be sure that you're going to recuperate that? The honest answer is you're not sure. But uh, what you can do is make a major effort and do a huge design competition, which we always do between our teams in Shanghai, Munich, and here in Santa Monica. Uh, to make sure that you've looked in every corner and that you distill the best possible design for any car. That's, that's how we approach our, our job. Can I ask you? Yes. So if you just kind of propose a car where the whole thing is a screen, or every glass is a screen at the same time as it's a glass a window, and you get the feedback and everybody says, oh, that's awful. Is that irritating you? It can be. I mean, first... Are you thinking, like, this is the future, man, you don't get it. <laughs> no, I mean, how is the feedback loop, I mean, not internally, but externally, in, in, because these kind of things are also proposals in a sense, no? No, it's a good question. I mean, and you know how it is with, with feedback. Yeah. Uh, it's not always formulated in a way that, uh, that you would like, uh, but it's always good feedback, you know, because it's typically honest or straightforward feedback. So what we do typically, before we go to market with a new car, we do clinics, so we, we test the design, but only one design, not three. Only one design that we feel pretty good about already, we tested in China, Germany, and in the US. We do get feedback, and, um, and we can still influence the design to a certain extent, um, and, and we, we take that feedback on board. Uh, the thing that, of course, we need to realize is, you can ask customers for their opinion, always, and they will also give it to you. Um, but they cannot know what the world will look like in 25 or 26. And that's when those new cars come out. So you have to take that on board, but you also have to, uh, you know, then interpret what the future is going to bring. Uh, and then you also have to know, and it's a psychological thing, that people want to surround themselves with things that give them comfort. And then once you have created that set of, of stuff, um, then you probably don't want to change it. So if you're then confronted by something very new, the first reaction is typically, hmm, I don't know if, if I want this. That's very normal. If you're shown the same thing a second time or two years later, first you do a show car, two years later comes the real car, then your chance of acceptance are higher. Um, and maybe still not 100% of the people accept it right away at launch, but the car will be in the market for eight years and it still has to be relevant in 2033, for example. So you have to take all of that on board and there's no mathematical formula actually for that, unfortunately, but you have to know all of this and you have to live with some uh, also negative feedback perhaps in the beginning. And if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. But is there a tool set? 
like you inherited from Bengal? Like, look, they, they say they don't like it, but they will like it. Or something no, like no, no, no. I mean, it's like a BMW tradition about these things, how to kind of digest <laughs> The BMW tradition is only to, to forge your own path. Right, mm -hmm. um, and that means that you need to know your heritage. You need to know where you're coming from, and you need to know a thing or two about the future. And then, in the end, you have to make a decision where you're going to go. Um, and this is what, what we've been doing for ages, I would say, before Chris Bangle, during this time, and now. Um, and so far, I think that that has served us well. I think in the new generation of design that we're now working on. Um, it will almost look like we have skipped a generation because we're really gearing up for, for big change. But in all the brands, we will make sure that the design uh, will become uh, closer to the origin or, or let's say the core of the brand than ever before. And I think then uh, you are able to attract new customers, but also uh, the ones that you already have. Mm -hmm. In this case, I have a question for you, Thomas. Uh, have you ever built uh, a model towards the creation of an artwork that then you weren't absolutely happy about? Uh, so, could be considered, I wouldn't say feel, but something that didn't end up in the final artwork? No, no. Actually, um, it happens that, uh, it, it, I mean, before I start something, I just kind of think a lot about it. And it kind of sometimes it takes me two, three years until I find a solution for that. But the, the, my way of working is actually coming from from a picture. So I, I have a couple of ideas what I would like to do, and they basically sit in my imagined table on the, on the tabletop. Um, and then I see a picture somewhere, and I, think, and I just realize that that actually was what I was looking for, but I didn't know that that's what I was looking. That's the, the picture for the theme with, which I was looking for. And that when that happens. You know, you can also construct an image when you want or something like that. So, if you would have come with like every car for like the last five years, I probably would have thought like, okay, at some point I have to do it. But it wouldn't be very, it wouldn't be the same. You don't yeah, basically you can't have to get you up in the morning to do it, and it wouldn't have the same energy basically. So sometimes very intuitive. Yeah, it's very intuitive. It's very intuitive, but it's also um, you know like also like talking about heritage or something and I mean it really I meant heritage really like because sometimes I can you know have you, I do what I do and then if I stop doing it nobody else would continue doing it whereas you have a succession of people and you have to kind of somehow also create a continuity and at the same time by definition you have to con you have to break the con continuity all the time as well and that's I guess is quite tricky to do if you have an identity which is you know an imagination the BMW brand what is that kind of you know in the end, we know what it is, but I wonder whether there is a little, you know, when I start as a designer, you go to the room, first you go to down to the room and you look at all the old things or something. I mean, how do you get the get the feel to keep it a BMW if I worked for, let's say, Skoda before that or something? That's not none of my business. I'm just imagining this, you know, so, but I don't have that, you know, I just, I, for me, it's also my own work is my heritage in, this, in the same sense, but I made, I made it all myself and, and I'm trying not to um, repeat myself, and that's basically the rule for me. So. And I, I'd like to know actually how did you start working in this way? Well, that's kind of... Um, I, I, uh, I started making sculptures and I, I thought... Um, I mean, I came as a painter to, to the art school, and I, at some point I just got, I thought like, I can paint everything, but I don't know what to paint because there are so many paintings already. And then I thought, okay, that's, I have like a couple of years left here, I just start something completely different, which I have no clue about, which is sculpture. And I thought like, if I do a sculpture now, and I put, you know, it's bronze, it costs a lot of money, and I, I kind of have to work on it for five months. It's five, first of all, quite lots of money in that five months um, of my life. And I thought like, I just kind of started something really simple. And as paper is such a ubiquitous material, which you can buy everywhere, everybody knows how it works. And you can always, you know, like throw it away, and it doesn't harm anyone. Whereas throwing away bronze literally can harm someone. Um, so I thought, like, I, I start with that, and then I did this for a couple of years, and I made sculptures which I thought were good, and then I threw them away because I had a very small apartment. Like one of those cubicles would be my entire lives. And then, and you think, like, okay, 
do I need a TV or do you want to keep my stuff? And I skipped the TV, but then the bed, I need a bed. <laughs> and so as a, as, a, as, a, as a starting sculptor, you always have the problem, should I keep this or should I get rid of it? And I thought that getting rid of it is a good method. And then, and then I realized that I never know whether it's going to actually going anywhere. And I started photographing it. And then the photographs looked so light and lousy that I had a new problem. But for an artist, having a problem and creating a problem and then creating another problem out of that is, is a very good way of keep, work, keep working and kind of, you know, developing some kind of path where one, one thing comes to another. So that's how I started. I have to say, I, I was able to visit Thomas's studio in Berlin and also here in Santa Monica. And he can build anything out of paper. Uh, to me, also from a craftsmanship uh, idea, that is fascinating. Uh, I know you probably know his work, he, he has built the Oval Office completely, full size, uh, and then took it all apart again. Uh, you know, when I was looking at that, it was so, to me, um, you know, very hard to, to then destroy all of that again. He could build this complete car and paper. Um, and, uh, okay, to a certain extent we have that too. We build several models before we, we go to production. We don't keep all of them. Uh, we have a storage facility, but we keep quite a few where we have 300 cars or models that the world has never seen. So I try to be a good curator of our history. I don't know for what, because actually it's not open to the public. And still, uh, we do so many projects that you have to, at some point, also let go of some. Uh, but uh, Thomas took a clear decision, which I find remarkable. He's not keeping anything. And uh, it's fantastic stuff that then disappears. But OK, the pictures are. Yeah, the After how long they are destroyed, the, hmm? the models? Uh, for instance, I went to Paris, and right, so I went to Paris, my, my team is throwing it away. It takes two hours. It's okay. very simple. Yeah. You know, it, may, it takes two months to make it, but two hours to take it out. <laughs> yeah. But it's also, you know, it's everything has to pass. It's literature. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you don't want to wait yourself with that. And I guess gives you the freedom of the next. It gives you the freedom towards yeah. the next uh, creation or the next artwork. But you know, like what you said about craftsmanship is also, um, I assume that most of you guys kind of know about design, doing yourself or something. Are you kind of interested in that? Working with your hands is a very different thing um, from working, I mean, you work with your hands on a computer too, but I think there are things about working with your hands which you still need to kind of get a sensory uh, feeling, and I think that's kind of, that's um, when you say that I can build everything on paper. That's you know I'm glad you think so. <laughs> um, but the for me, I, I also think with my hands. Yeah. You know, I have the best ideas when I do something somehow, and even if I throw it away, this is still doing something. And uh, and I think that that is that is important. I can think without my hands too, mm -hmm. but I have the best, I, the better ideas if I. If I'm busy with something, you know, and then the other thing is like you all, you never finish it in the evening. You just always leave it half finished because next morning you don't want to have the blank paper in front of you yeah. thinking, oh, yeah. what did I do it today? Yeah. So, you know, stuff like that is coming, you know, it's probably simply the same as in, in your practice where you just think like at some point I have to get, get a haptic model. It looks all cool on a screen, but at some point I need something which is, you know, where I can also say, take it off a little, or, you know, I think the feedback of the model is very important. No? It is, and also sketching. I like to be able to, to think on paper, it's better than to explain in words what, what you want. Um, or, like you say, on a model. We, we I think, uh, are pretty good at thinking in, in three dimensions, uh, but you have to then start doing it, um, mm -hmm. and see for yourself, and that brings you to, to new ideas. That's part of the or it brings you to realize that the idea wasn't as good as you thought, which doesn't mean that you throw it away, you just have to change it until it's actually somehow, and that sometimes will not be, it's not all about a realization of an idea, it's also changing the idea according to the feedback that object gives you. About the process, mm. um, of finding the right, it's quite in the circle. No? Um, and Thomas, you also, uh, it's not the first time you worked in 2019 with BMW, because you also in 2000 mm -hmm. were invited uh, to collaborate with the project Outback um, with fellow artists such as Candida Offer of Wolf and Films. Uh, 
I'd like to know from your perspective when approaching again BMW 25 years later, or a bit less, how things have changed. Well, at that time, um, I do remember Andreas Guski was also somebody mm -hmm. like on, on such a project, and it was a project which came uh, to the artists uh, to commission photo photographs of every aspect, any aspect of BMW, and um, I have I had a feeling at this I wanted to photograph something which nobody has access to, also to start with, and I didn't want to photograph something I wanted to kind of see something and then make a model of that. Um, and not only gave, you know, I don't know what, what, how it was with the other people, but um, they gave me access to, you know, their, their kind of secret laboratories in the north of Munich somewhere, which was quite remarkable. Um, because they, you know, I, I mean, nobody kind of touched me whether I have a camera with me. And it was all for trust in me. And I, I always said, I don't know whether anything is coming out of that, I just want to see it first. And then, you know, I saw a couple of interesting, I saw the Mini before it came out and it was a very highly anticipated object because you did a, one of your first projects was actually the Mini, the, which is still as a stumble standing around. Anyways, I saw that and that I found this somehow exciting that I would see something which would only come to fruition in like maybe two years later. So it's very rare to, for an artist to come to some art school. I mentioned Gursky because I said I got cold feet and I thought, like, okay, am I, am I selling out? If I do work for BMW now, and then probably it's kind of be seen as promotion, which I definitely didn't want to do. And um, and he said, well, you, you, you know, there's always something interesting coming. You will see some, you will go there, and there's something you 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 just didn't expect to see. And I I thought I, I thought he was very right, so I I started doing that. And what I saw was the, an echo chamber, which you see now everywhere. But at the time, it was actually one of those few. You know where the kind of things come out, where there's, there's absolutely no sound. And I spoke to the engineer there. It is a very, it's a very special room because it's also very visually, of course, very beautiful. And he said basically, uh, he explained me how it works, and I just realized that this is a model for landscape because what they do is like, you know, like they realized in the 70s, 72 or 71 or something, they were like testing cars and they wanted to know how how noisy they are. And so they had microphones outside in the street and it would drive down. And of course it was raining, it was cold, yeah. it was wet, this, the tires were warm or something. It would always have different results. And then they thought, okay, we need to kind of take all we need to know from the landscape, which is kind of no echo, because like if you drive through a tunnel, of course you have a lot of echo. And then we have to bring it into the room, but the car can't drive. So we have to have it on, you know, the little rolling wheels. So we can actually have the car still standing with the engine running and the tires and then we have microphones in the room and they kind of go in the same speed reversed and so basically it is a landscape you're looking at but it's indoors and it's a very highly engineered kind of idea of like a representation of a landscape which means it's it's a, it's a model of a landscape and i i thought that was a very beautiful thing and i did it so um i was quite happy with that piece of work and they um I think that you showed it somewhere later on in the museum as well. And that's what I would change now is like I get a, I got a lot of offers over the years to do something with what you call industry, but mostly I refused them because I thought like if I I just it's it's you know corporate things are not so interesting for an artist. Um, but every now and then something interesting is coming up, and that was Vincent's one because I thought like these teaser images, they have a magnetism and they have a, a true love to the photograph. So you just might, you know, remember that I think Car Magazine or something, they said, you know, this is the hot new car and it's amazing. And some guy from Munich did a model for this mm -hmm. or something. They were really disappointed that they couldn't <laughs> see more of the torch lamp in the corner or something, you know. So, and I thought this kind of, that, this is quite, uh, that was for me that I, I wasn't afraid that I would lose something if I work with a, with a company because it's an interesting and I didn't, I mean, full disclosure, I didn't get a car and I wasn't getting very rich on it. It was really for the sake of it, I have to say. So it's not, not you know, setting up a very different position. I think that beautiful. But I did another thing, if I may kind of mention another company. I did another thing which was also interesting. I did something for. Uh, for uh, Proud of asking me whether they can use one of my images six years later, and then they used it um, in complete collaboration with me for like all the windows in the entire world. And 
um, it was up then, and the pandemic hit, and so basically the windows were up for two, two months. And it was so interesting to see how how meticulously they plan the outing. They have a huge warehouse. Can you see that? Yeah. They have a huge warehouse, and they have most of the shop windows in all the key markets in in life size standing there. And they try every motif in the Tokyo, whatever Ayama shop that some and. All the windows are standing there and to see that, and then you have your own thing there, and it rolls out over like two weeks. They print the stuff, and uh, in all markets they have completely the, the, the way how they how it's internationalized is just unbelievable. For an artist to see that, is, as I said, you'll always see something interesting. Yeah. So you did get something mass produced and fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I never. They never told me whether it worked in fact. So for them, uh, but no. But you can, you know. Sometimes it's kind of interesting and. And inspiring to kind of actually try it out. If you're in a safe environment, I mean, you want to design a handbag. No, I, I think so, but that's a lot of what BMW Open Work is about. Uh, as artists find a safe environment to work with and uh, exchange uh, knowledge with designers on topics they're interested in. And it only works when the artist is already an interest in collaborating with BMW as a company, as an heritage. Um, yeah, but also BMW has a long history. I mean, don't forget the podcasts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic history. So I would like, first of all, to thank you very much for, for this brilliant conversation and open up to the public uh, for some questions. Is anyone? Yes. Hi, I'm Laura Bursting from Heart Design here. Adrian, I have a question for you. You and Thomas were talking earlier about the value of the analog in looking at things by hand in the three-dimensional world. At the same time, car design studios, including especially here at Designworks, is going more digital. In fact, from what I understand, there will be no clay modeling here, there will be no milling, anything like that. So then where do you see BMW striking that balance now in design between doing everything digitally and then going to Kind of more analog world. Yeah. I mean, the digital is part of our daily life and, uh, and that uh, can never be uh, pushed back. What we deliver to our engineering colleagues is a, a set of data. That's what they need from us. How many models we do for them is not uh, relevant, right? So uh, it depends on the, on the project actually which tool we use. Um, the digital tools is always what we start uh, out with. Uh, when we start creating the shape first, we, we work in the computer. Um, sometimes if we do a concept car, we go straight from the computer to the real thing. Yeah, that's what happened here. That's also what happened with that race car project over there. So if you are in a time crunch, uh, then, then you do that. So our digital tools and, and capabilities are good enough, I would say, to create also a complex shape uh, of a running vehicle. Uh, when we do a production program, uh, we afford ourselves the luxury sometimes also of milling um, a foam model or, or clay model. Because that's a design, of course, that we know we want to produce uh, in large volumes and we want to sell it for eight years all around the world. So we feel that um, that is an investment or, or is something uh, that warrants every now and then uh, a checkup. And uh, if you have a, a physical model, uh, the human eye or the human hand is actually uh, really, really good at sensing any, any defects. Uh, so it is helpful then to look at it for a while and leave it sit, uh, sitting there for, for a while and come back to it the next morning like, uh, like Thomas said or the next Monday. Um, and luckily in our production programs we, we still have that possibility, we have that time. Um, but uh, again, what we deliver in the end is a set of data, so it always happens in parallel. We do a checkup um, uh, in, in a physical model, maybe work on it uh, as a physical model for a little bit, but that all gets fed back into the computer. Yeah, um, I think maybe we didn't have time for that, or um, you know, I don't know. But um, we we wanted to actually have some teaser images, and, and the idea of teaser images is you don't show the whole car. I know he could do that; he could have done that. But um, we wanted these images to be somewhat mysterious, 
um, and make people want to know more. So that was actually what we agreed on, that that's what we were going to do. Uh, we were still building uh, the real car at that time, so we had no physical model to show him, only some computer data. And I think he could have done it, but then we would have had this plus his car, and you know, that was also not really uh, the point. Uh, I don't know if he would like to do that one day, maybe we, we do it uh, at another point in time. Going the other direction, uh, I'm seeing right actually from uh, Mitchell. Um, would, would you consider designing a metaverse um, in a virtual environment? I can imagine that. Uh, actually, uh, of course, now that all the studios around the world are connected, we can already have live reviews where we are actually also working on the model. Yeah, where I'm sitting in Munich, I give some feedback, the team here in California will say, okay, I know what you mean, we can make that happen real time uh, and share all of that. Uh, we can already do that. What we're also thinking of, of course, is to see if we can uh, do something, uh, you know, online where we could invite people that are not a part of our team to contribute. Um, you know that the BMW brand has a lot of fans, for example, and Mini as well. And online we are already uh, seeing a lot of designs popping up uh, that are meant for us. Uh, so I'm actually really at the moment thinking of trying to make something happen in the virtual space where we can allow uh, real interaction between our design team and people outside. One last question. Um, talking on behalf of the BMW Open Work Cafes, because in the past they asked if they would potentially collaborate with design uh, works. Can we make that happen? Absolutely. That's that's what I said in the beginning. That's why I think it's one of the reasons for having a wonderful studio like this one or the ones that we have uh, around the world, uh, where they can interact uh, with our design team. Um, without uh, all the pressures of, uh, of the big central organization. And, yeah, uh, that's always an open invitation. We cannot have open door like we have today all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, we are here for, uh, for those kind of exchanges. Thank you. I think then we hand it back to Olga, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you.